Sure, thanks. Uh, well, we're really excited to get started. Um, you know, the college basketball season always is very exciting, or this time of year is always very exciting, especially for us now with the unveiling of the new Robbins Center and being able to host the first four games there this year. So uh, practice has been going well, and we feel like uh, we're just kind of ready to play at this point. So uh, as soon as we mop the floor a couple more times, we'll be ready to go. Chris, is this your, your deepest team? And, and if the answer is yes or no, uh, how will this season's depth uh, benefit you? Yeah, I would say it, it's close. I think the, the 2010 team, when uh, Ryan Butler and Gonzo started, you know, that enabled France, uh, Francis Martel, Kevin Smith, Darius Garrett off the bench. Uh, that team was, was, was pretty deep. Uh, but this team, I think, is, is also deep. I think in our front court depth is, is, is um, very good. Uh, and I think we're going to have the capability of playing a lot of different lineups and then kind of with one sub go from, you know, a small team to a big team or a big team to a small team. So I think this, I think the depth is always a good thing. Um, just, you know, most basically it means you have a, a good level of talent on your team, and that's the most important thing. Um, so I, I think it will help us because I, I, I like – Kind of our experience, even though our, our you know we're going to play four sophomores, but those guys all played a lot last year. Uh, and while I, I expect great things from those guys, I think as sophomores there'll still be a little bit of up and down, much much less so than as freshmen. But um, so I think our depth will really help us there, and that'll give us opportunities to have guys playing well, you know, enough guys playing well all the time. Can you expand on, on those four guys a little bit? Because I'm sure you wouldn't necessarily want them to play as much as they did freshman year, but looking back sure. at the experience they gained, they're not not—they're more experienced than a lot of sophomores out there. Absolutely. Uh, I think those four sophomores are our four most Im improved players, uh, as you might expect going from freshman year to sophomore year. And I think that they really, all of them could be could be great players. You know, I think Alonzo, Nelson, Adota, and Terry Allen uh, could potentially be really special players, but I think Deion Taylor and Trey Davis are you know, except, could be exceptional college basketball players. I really do. So for all for those guys all to be in the front court, all to have played last year, as you said, maybe a little bit more than you'd like to play f that many freshmen. They all gained valuable experience. I think they showed in, in a lot of different games what they're capable of and should show much more of that this season. Coach, kind of piggybacking off that, how much does that give you the ability as, in terms of practice to kind of speed up the learning curve and, and you know, speed up just the way you guys install, install things and, and get ready a little bit sooner? Right. Well, last year, you know, when the more freshmen you have, the more time it's going to take because those guys are going to – everybody's going to learn a little bit differently, a little different pace. So the fewer freshmen we have – and we have – plenty of freshmen this year, uh, but we have enough older guys, I think, where we can concentrate on those guys. And so uh, with Terry, Zoe, Trey, and Dion, you know, so much farther ahead, so much further ahead than they were last year, that's, that's really a, a big help for us and helps us spend time with the freshmen that we need to, but also kind of gets us moving more quickly. Coach Mooney, uh, you spoke about Alonzo a minute ago. Do you see him going past sort of the Darius Garrett role and expanding to be an offensive threat in addition to being a really good defensive player? I do. Uh, you know, Darius was uh, was a really good player for us, but uh, you know his contribution was was largely on defense. Uh, I think Alonzo just has a little bit higher skill level than than Darius, um, and uh, maybe is probably a better finisher around the basket. Uh, and and Alonzo also is a is a good outside shooter. I, I think he's, I think it's there's the potential that he could emerge as a truly great player. Uh, he's fast. He's incredibly fast. He has very, very good defensive instincts. Um, and I think just the more he plays and the more he is out there, uh, he could he could really become a, a tremendous player. Cedric talked talked about how you want he. How you wanted him to be more aggressive? Oh, that's what you're sort of always pushing. And you should, I mean, I don't know if you want to compare him to, to Kevin Anderson, but that was sort of his forte was the aggressiveness. Is that what you right. want to see out of Sed? I would. I, you know, Sed has the ability to play aggressively and play well. A lot of guys can't play as aggressively as possible and still play well because they make more mistakes. They turn the ball over more. He's not like that. He can play 
all out and still play really, really well, and in fact, play better. You know, Kevin kind of let the game come to him a lot of times in the first half and then really took over in the second half. And I don't think that would be as good of a strategy for, for Cedric. Uh, you know, Kevin's obviously unique and very special. But Cedric, when he plays aggressively, he's, he's incredible. And now that takes a lot of energy, uh, but I think he kind of has that. And uh, so I'm, I encourage him to play, you know, really almost toe the line, not, not, not out of control, but really kind of uh, full speed ahead as much as he can because when he's like that, he's, he's tremendous. Are you in favor of the new hand-checking guidelines? Uh, I mean, obviously, depending on if they are called the way they yeah. say they will. You know, I am. I think that uh, the game is better when when the when you get to see the the players do something fun, exciting, uh, and also th those are the rules. There are there are rules for a reason. And the NBA, you know, if you look at the NBA, probably started doing about ten years ago, and now the NBA there's much more fluid motion on the perimeter. There's much less physical contact on ball screens, on defending ball screens. There's virtually no hand checking. Uh, and I think, you know, we can certainly get to that point. And uh, I think that's, I think it's, I think there'll be an adjustment period uh, where there, there are some games where there are 15 fouls on each team in the first half. But I think once, once everybody adjusts to that, I think it'll make for a better game. Coach, um, so going back to Seth, uh, him being selected to the third, uh, third team for preseason, what do you think? I know you probably don't look into the rankings that much. What do you think about it? Is that a fair ranking? Do you expect more out of him? You know, I think he'll probably actually do better than that. Uh, although it's a great honor anytime you're mentioned. You know, this is a tremendous conference. So if you have any individual recognition, that's great. I think Sed has a capability of doing better than that. And uh, I think, you know, I don't know if he would have said it, but I think he feels that way and we would all feel that way. Coach, John asked you about the depth of the team, and obviously it's, it, it's solid. With that in mind, I know you guys don't get too caught up in the preseason poll or anything mm -hmm. like that, but do you look at this and, and get pretty excited about what you guys have the potential to accomplish this year? I do. I do mainly because uh, you know, I feel we have one of, the, one of the best players in the conference, if not the best, in Cedric. And then I think beyond that, Derek, uh, Kendall, these four sophomores that I spoke of, I think Wayne is going to have a very, very good year. I think our freshman uh, talent is good. So yeah, I, I think we could do pretty well. I mean, it's a long season and there'll be, uh, you know, ups and downs and whatnot, but I think we have the, the personnel and the talent to do well. Derek was fairly raw when he came in freshman year and, yeah. and he's certainly developed and developed his offensive games. Where do you see him as a senior and is it where you wanted him and pictured him as a freshman? I think so. Derek has really improved on his perimeter play uh, in a great deal. He shoots the ball very well now. I think he's a very capable three-point shooter. Uh, before he got hurt last year, he was averaging maybe 13 and seven, somewhere around there. Uh, I, I think he can. I think he can certainly match those numbers. Uh, you know, the more he, he's he moves incredibly well for someone his size, and I think we just want to see more and more of that. You know, as far as being tough and physical, that that comes a little bit easier to him. But moving, that's what really separates him and makes him unique. So we just want to see more and more of that, and he's put work in to, to put himself in a position to show that. Do you expect the, uh, the lineup of schools, the way that the lineup, the A-10 has changed to affect the conference's overall RPI and maybe the standing towards the end of the year when you're looking at at-large bids? Because you lost a couple of high-profile yeah. teams and bringing in Mason. How much do you think that will change? I, I think there will be a, a slight change. Temple's been – great for a long, long time. Xavier, Xavier has been great for a long time. So those two are, are pretty, pretty impactful losses. Uh, and so I, I think we'll are probably, you know, if we have enough schools have a good non-league record going into conference, it'll be, it'll be similar. But I just think the chances decrease when you take away Xavier and Temple especially. Uh, you know, from then, then you need other schools that, to, to really kind of to step up their game. And they might not be able to have the schedule that Xavier and Temple were able to have. So um, so I, I think that last year was an incredible season. I think probably the last four or five years were, have been really great for the conference. So I would anticipate that uh, we should still have a great year, 
but that you know we might not have as many at large opportunities as we did last year. Does that put more of a focus for you on the non conference lineup that you have, especially considering the teams that you already have and the potential of teams you could play? Sure. That, that that's you know, and for us we're always going to try to do that. Um, you know, whether Xavier and Temple are in the league or not. But it definitely everybody, I think everyone who has who has a feeling that they could have a good team, you know, really needs to play a good schedule. And, and uh Really, almost no matter what conference you're in, maybe say for the top two or three, uh, but especially for us, we're always going to try to play as as good of a schedule as we can. Uh, freshman, uh, any involved in a significant way, and any redshirting? Uh, I I don't know about the redshirting right now, John, uh, uh, but Sean Dre Jones probably has stood out as as someone who has played very very well. Sean Dre, great feel for the game, really good sense. Uh, competitive player. I, th I think he's going to be a really good player. And Josh Jones probably uh, uh, has has come along uh, in the last couple of weeks and has, has played very well. Coach, could you pick, I mean, I know I'm sure you take every game one at a time. Each game is probably equally important per se. But is there any out of conference game that you look at the schedule now and you say, we really want to win this game? Delaware. <laughs> but you know you have I mean actually even more so this year because it's the first game and you know what I'm what I'm worried about is that the, those first four minutes of the Delaware game I don't want us to be you know shoot the ball over the backboard because everybody's so excited and and um, you know to play in the in the new arena and whatnot so I do kind of have extra concern because it's the first game in the new arena